Hey, what's going on guys we are back with the aries 22 recap reaction show zero hour tim lloyd jeff hobbs thanks for joining us guys and jeff we are uh one day removed now from aries 22 uh from chattanooga tennessee from the chattanooga convention center downtown uh fun night of fights man uh one of those nights where um we had some very, uh, you know, interesting results. We had all kinds of different results from knockouts, decisions, split decisions, draws, uh, submissions, of course. Uh, so I'm excited to break it down, man, uh, as we uh, get ready to close out 2023 with uh, one more big one here coming up in December. But uh, for today, we're putting to bed Aries 22. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. One of those sneaky shows again. Uh uh, had a lot of, uh, you know, really good talent on the card. Um, you know, sometimes you have cards where you've got just this this mega thing at one end and everything kind of building up, but everything was just kind of even across the board and every every fight delivered. Um, and, and, you know, everyone kind of just did their part, uh, getting their fans there, their their friends, family, fan base. So everybody kind of chipped in and, and ended up where, you know, as a show at first, we're like, Man, we just don't have those superstars like we. But you know what? They are superstars because they show up, they showed out, and and they did bring uh they bring some they brought some fans with them, man. So it ended up just kind of being one of those sneaky shows where you turn around like, man, man this thing really turned out nice. And then yeah. the fights happen, and you watch the fights, and you're like, and these some bitches delivered. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Uh, as always, man, Chattanooga just a great spot for us to uh, go to about three or four times a year, and. Um, Seems like the the city is really uh you know picking on walk up was good again so I'm excited excited to go back what do you think uh, next uh we're looking at maybe March, March. yeah March March I want to say he said um, yeah early early March yeah early March so can't wait to do it but man let's uh jump right into it Tim uh the prelims uh we had uh, four preliminary fights on the card uh, we started out with uh, a tag team of uh, Jeff Jankowski and the young Latrell uh, Ben's uh, younger son. Uh, headed up uh, into the cage to take on OG Josh Maynard uh, and uh, his partner Rockenbach. Uh, it's such a great Owen. Name. Yeah, Owen Rockenbach. Owen Rockenbach, yeah. such a great name. But uh, maybe this one will kind of come as a surprise, you know? Yeah. Uh, you know, the uh, the team of Latrell and Jankowski from uh, Lawrenceburg took on the Pedigo submission team and swept it three subs to nothing in six minutes and 46 seconds. Uh, uh, was quite impressed with that. Not saying it because I'm kind of taking anything away. Just didn't expect it. That's about the bottom line. Just didn't expect them to sweep it and close out the show or close out the 10-minute time uh, period early and, and sweep it 3-0. Um, next up, we had uh, Jax Peavy taking on Gianni McCarroll. This was a... Uh, this was a uh, juniors, right, Tim? Uh, juniors, yeah. we tie yeah. 165. Older teenagers, uh, because hell, they struck me as damn near close to grown men. But uh, yeah, this he's one, got like a full sleeve. Yes, yes. This was a, <laughs> uh, this was a really entertaining bout. 29-28 uh, on all three judges' scorecards, uh, giving the nod to Gianni McCarroll. Um, really skilled guys, though, uh, for their age. Mm -hmm. um, was really impressed with it. It was really close. Uh, and, and as you can see on the judges' scorecard, it really was just a one-round difference. Um, we moved uh, after that, uh, Tim, into Justin Gatch versus Vince Thompson. Unanimous draw. Did not have a winner in this one. This is one that, uh, to the naked eye, you watched both men walk in, and um, Justin Gatch jack like he's just done a stretch in San Quentin. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, Justin, don't get mad at me for saying this. Just, <laughs> just say, look like he's done a lot of push-ups in his time. And, and Vince Thompson coming in, uh, you know, just kind of pedestrian-looking guy. And, man, Vince uh, Vince was in it. Mm. And uh, him and Gatch were giving each other all they wanted. Gatch, a nice little, uh, nice little egg under his eye by the time. But uh, I guess the judges, I, I, I would love to see the breakdown of the cards, though. I wish I would have to find out 
how that formula worked out, who gave what to what, and mm. who couldn't decide more than anything. I want to say who just couldn't make a decision on something and called it, you know, some things, uh, you know, even, but unanimous draw, uh, bridesmaids on both ends of this one. And then uh, probably the crown jewel here of this, uh, definitely prelim car, but <laughs> damn near maybe the whole damn fight card, you could argue. It really um, was. Yes. Uh, we had our first ever uh, juniors title on the line, and uh, it happened in a uh, juniors tie bout between Trayton Byerly and Chris Conway. And holy shit, Trayton Byerly, I've watched the replay over and over and over again uh, with, uh, with a knockout in the fifth round. Uh, this one was the first round for me, Tim. I felt it was almost brutal. Uh, Byerly came out just strong and was just hitting bombs on yeah. Conway, Boy, almost to the point where oh, I he dropped him like he dropped him like yes. real quick. Yeah. But the, it, but the accumulation of punishment uh, was was actually starting to worry me. And, you know, I, I kind of made a, a comment to the sanctioning body and, you know, like I'm I mean, no means saying stop this. I was like, but if he continues to take that kind of continued punishment and accumulating it, I was like, can make me feel better. At least have the doctor go in and talk to him. Just check on him. Yeah. Um, They're 14 years old. I don't know if you said that already. Yes. Yes. I mean, these guys are kids. These guys are yeah. kids, but they're not fighting like kids. I'll tell you that right now. My kid's 14. And if I had to think that Trayton Byerly or Chris Conway was coming after my kid, we might move. Um, <laughs> so, um, but uh, man, second round though, uh, Chris Conway kind of weathered that first round storm. And started finding his groove and getting his shots off. Man, it was such a close fight. But uh, in the fifth round, man, it was Trayton Byerly with a beautiful right uh, that dropped Conway. And that was enough for the referee uh, stepping in at three seconds uh, in the fifth round with a knockout, Trayton Byerly. Man, uh, yeah, yeah, you, you got it right uh, on the head there with uh, your description of the tag team bout. I think it was not – I would I, I would have – I think obviously the clock Jankowski uh, and Latrell as slight underdogs here, just mainly because Jankowski and Maynard have gone head to head and we saw uh, Maynard come out on top, you know, but the, the, the strategy from the Lawrenceburg team was like really good. I mean, they kept uh, the Pedigo guys over in their corner the entire times, frequent use of tags. And uh, for them, I would never have predicted a three, nothing sweep in six minutes there. The, very impressive from those guys. Still angling towards this tag team tournament. There's so many. Uh, there's so many uh, good tag teams, and the and the strategy we're seeing from these guys. Ah, it's just it's really leveling up. Love it. Uh, the uh, McCarroll and PV fight, uh, like you said, both kids very skilled, very technical. Um, it almost felt for the first round or two like they were like friendly fighting. Uh, you know, it's like because they're kind of both big kids, uh, big strapping kids. And it didn't seem like, it seemed like they were throwing at like 50%. And then as the fight progressed, they started the, you know, the intensity began to pick up and uh, yeah, two to one for McCarroll. That, that was just all good. And then of course um, I think that uh, the Gatch and Thompson fight uh, from what I could gather, um, I don't know if, I think you were working on something that when this happened in the first round, there was a Gatch had a knockdown of Thompson uh, in the first round. Yeah, I so see. I would mean that uh, Thompson got the last two rounds, got, got 10-8 on the first, and that's where they got the draw from. So I was okay with that. Uh, Thompson, uh, very unassuming, but very talented, man. He's tough. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, he, he throws some some really good technique out there. Uh, very well coached, obviously, by Alex Roberts there. Uh, and, of course, uh, all those guys from Stryker uh, always come uh, prepared uh, that with Frank and Jason getting those guys ready. Gatch is one of those guys that – once he gets kind of like reined in and he's not just so raw, that guy will be a force. I mean, it's obvious that he's he, he's throwing with with bad intentions. Um, and then of course Byerly, man, fourteen years old, the hand speed on this kid, uh, the movement, the, uh, the the head movement, the the swagger, the uh, it's really all coming together at fourteen years old. We still got four more years before this kid can uh, you know fight for real per se. Uh, we could have another, I said last night, another Tyler Jones on our hands by the time he turns 18, man. So, uh, and he grapples too, uh, you know, so this is a guy that, that he does train on the ground. And I can't say enough uh, about how impressed I was, though, also of Conway, just uh, kind of shell-shocked, it seemed like, right off the rip. And once he found his groove, man, I mean, he was, uh, he was a very determined young man, you know, nose busted up, still marching forward. 
didn't really like that it was stopped from what I could tell. You know, uh, I think that he would have liked to maybe kept fighting on, you know, that last round. So, you know, I told him, I don't know, countless times to keep his head up because uh, he's going to get plenty of wins uh, in his career as he progresses along too. Uh, so a lot of fun on the prelims. We ran a little longer than what we anticipated, but uh, yeah, a lot of good action. Yeah. Um, you know, and just one more thing on those kids. I, and it's, you know, it happens as they progress along. You're going to, you're going to find a, a time where, you know, in your area, you are the best and you're the big dog. And these two kids come from two different areas to meet. That's when you're going to find like, hell, there's, there's killers in other places mm-hmm. too, you know, and that's kind of, I think what happened was Conway, we know has been, you know, doing his thing in his area of uh, Kentucky. Like Yona's seen yeah. area. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and killing it. But, you know, as they start getting older and progressing and traveling, you're going to find like every town or every region has that kid too. Mm-hmm. And when you finally meet them up, that's what you get is what we saw last night was just an explosion of, of talent in the cage, but also not to, you know, go without saying we, we decided on the spot. Usually the army national guard, uh, yeah, tough right. hickory award is something we save till the end of the night. It'd and, be hard to beat that. And take a look at the entire card as a whole and see who, you know, who gave the, you know, the toughest, um, or who gave the most heart uh, showed the toughest grit. And uh, we decided before we even left the uh, prelims, it was time to give this damn award right now. And uh, so we did. So congratulations to Chris Conway for uh, that uh, uh, Tennessee Army National Guard toughest hickory award. All right. Uh, moving on. Undercard. Undercard. We had, let's see, four fights in our uh, undercard. We started out the evening uh, with Ribbon Sullivan uh, going up against Cody Ortiz, uh, three two-minute rounds of Muay Thai action. Uh, Sullivan took a unanimous decision, 30-27. Ortiz took this on uh, pretty short notice. Uh, Brevin accepting it on short notice or, or agreeing and to Brevin it. was preparing to do MMA. Yes, agreeing to it on short notice just as well. Uh, but Brevin had sold some tickets. He had some friends, family there that wanted to see him compete. So he said, let me just stay active. And Cody Ortiz is one of the biggest gamers you're going to find in, in, in our region. And he said, yeah, I'll come do it. i got teammates. Why not? Mm-hmm. Um, let me have some of the action too. But 3027, uh, kind of, you know, pretty uh, unanimous. Uh, Brivin's hand speed is is just overpowering him. Uh, I don't know. Brivin's confidence, I think, holds him over a lot in, in these kind of – but uh, went the distance. And I'm sure Brivin uh, appreciates, you know, the opportunity to at least get in and, and throw, uh, the, throw hands for three full rounds. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I felt like Brivin was going to – he wanted the mic, and I thought he was going to say something or announce something, um, like he wanted or call someone out, and then mm-hmm. he didn't. Uh, but what I was impressed with afterwards, Brivin, again, I think is endearing himself to the crowd. He had a really nice post-fight speech. Uh, Tim, I think he's really kind of growing uh, mm-hmm. into his own and realizing that, uh, yeah – this is how I am when the fight starts and maybe in the lead up, but I'm not really a bad guy, you know, to the audience. And if you just give me a chance, and I, I really think we're seeing Brevin kind of grow up uh, a lot over the last year in the cage. So really good post-fight speech. I really was getting anxious. Though. I thought he's fixing to drop a bomb, like call somebody major out. Uh, but maybe he's just holding that in his back pocket. Uh, I think I know what you're talking about there. And uh, let's just say that if, if, you know, I don't think it's going to be soon, but the end of next year could get really interesting potentially if things go. Uh, well, you'll have to let me know about that. Oh, oh, do you not know? Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. No, he's, really, yeah, he's gonna. He's he's talking about calling out. Uh, uh, so one of the big, one of the big dogs on the roster, man. Uh, oh, so yeah, he's gonna need. To, he's gonna need to build his record up, I think, before you know that fight would make sense. But there's no doubt it'd be a hell of a fight. Oh, okay. Um, well, let's get yeah. through this so you can yeah. hear it coming after we yeah, hear right, yeah. it. It's, it is, it's not Smobby Smeen. Uh, uh, so, right. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. But all the same, I props to Cody uh, for, for stepping up, man. Uh, oh, I sure. thought Cody looked good. I thought Cody looked good too, man. Uh, Cody's Cody's obviously very technical. He's a skilled guy. Uh, I think the one, you know, uh, I guess you could say knock. It's not really a knock. It's just maybe been his hindrance here. He just doesn't seem to have that kill switch in there when he's got to just, like, get mean Put guys out of there because he's such a damn nice motherfucker, man. He's like one of the nicest guys you're going to come across. Really enjoy being around Cody. But uh, Briven just looked looked like uh, Briven does, man. Uh, Briven 
just continues to improve. As you said, he's, he's maturing inside, outside the cage. I would imagine that pro debut uh, surely come around soon. Yeah, especially with the luck he's had the last couple of bookings, mm. uh, trying to get some of these, you know, once you kind of get to the level he's at and the record he's got and getting mm. some of these guys. I thought we had one. You know, I had another guy with a, a similar record, and I thought we were going to make it happen. But after two pullouts now or, or dropouts and, you know, I usually don't when kids are that. I, mean, I call him a kid because I'm old. Uh, you know, as young as he is, uh, you know, I like him to stick around. I don't, I don't know if you should stick around as an amateur much longer. Nah, there's a lot of fun pro fights for him. Yeah, so I think there's something there. Um, moving on, next uh, bout was Kate Sandmeyer against uh, Bailey Flaherty. This was one of those Tim where you know had some heat in the build up uh, that you know came from a couple different directions and, and reasons. Um, a lot of six degrees of separation with some other guys yeah. on the card. So, you know, there was a little bit of heat there. And then uh, did not cool off at weigh-ins. Uh, mm. Flaherty came in uh, quite a bit overweight. And to make this fight happen, had to agree to give up a two-point deduction to start the fight. Uh, um, those two points, uh, your referee took them around the cage and let the uh, let the judges know to deduct two points from Miss uh, Flaherty. Um, but you know what? It didn't even come to play. So uh, Kate Sandmeyer defeated uh, Bailey Flaherty by armbar. Nice belly down armbar as well. Yeah. Too. Tell you what, Kate Sandmeyer is is impressing me. Mm. Uh, two minutes and twelve seconds into the first round for that armbar, uh, guys. But uh, you know, listen, we we got her as a debut. You don't know what you're going to get. Um, you know, Kate's an attractive girl. Um, and unfortunately, I'm not saying I feel like this, you know, but sometimes people just don't think that those cute girls can get nasty, can get, you know, mm -hmm. raw and rough and, and tough. They, you know, because we've seen so many come through the ranks in different regions and promotions where it's just selling a pretty face, you know. And so, you know, Kate is nasty, too. Kate is a fighter. Yeah. You know, I don't care what you say. Kate is a fighter. And it wasn't just. Oh, her debut, you know, maybe it wasn't the toughest competition, whatever you might know. Bailey Flaherty is a dog, and she's a fighter too. And to to get her out of there in a minute uh, with a with a beautiful submission, Kate Sandmeyer is for real. She's for real. Like, do not sleep on her. Uh, this just chick's got some chops, man, and I, I'm really impressed with her. Yeah, moving to 2-0 and o there, uh, you know, uh, that Rowan team, uh, it, it, we've talked about it several times, you know, uh, they, they fight tough. And, uh, you know, so sometimes their records are going to be more of the 50-50 ilk, you know, 500, but they're in there fighting difficult fights. Uh, and, you know, Sandmeyer has, has, has gotten wins in both of her first two, both against, you know, trained up girls. And Melissa Buckner in her first fight and then here, uh, uh, of course, against Bailey Flaherty. And, you know, giving up the, the weight disadvantage where, uh, you know, Flaherty missed weight on top of it all. The two points didn't even come into play, thankfully, because I was just dreaded the mess that that could have ended up being when they started calculating scorecards. But, uh, no, uh, I think that, uh, you know, in a women's division, 135, where you, you don't you could get to the top pretty quick, you know, at 2-0. and um, You know, I'd like to see uh, I'd like to see her fight uh, Julia Moore from uh, from uh, the ring combat. And uh, let's put that 135 strap up there. Moore is a girl that has not competed now in a bit. So she would have some some cage rust, but um, uh, with a bit of experience. I think, I think Julia's 4-1, and one, so she does have some more experience. She's been out for a while. I think that'd be a hell of a fight to go for that 135 title. Um, as for uh, as for Bailey, um, obviously got to get the weight under control. Um, you know, uh, she came in at 141, I think for this one. So, uh, you know, maybe something like taking a fight at 145 and not having to put herself through what she has put herself through three times now where at the way, and she looks just, you know, so depleted. She can't be fighting at her top energy levels. I can't imagine out there. Her and Samantha Buttery at 145, I think, would be a scrap, you know. So uh, I'm just glad we're kind of like fleshing out our female divisions more than anything. I, I Now we need some like, you know, we need to, more in those like 115, 105 divisions. Yeah, I like the Buttery idea with, with Flaherty. Um, also, you know, with, with Sandmeyer too, you know, our good friend James Davids, he's got such a stable up there. Mm -hmm. uh, Eichner would be a good one. Yeah, there's some good fights. You know, uh, they're they're all kind of busy right now with some, 
international competition and, and wrestling, things like that. But I think that would be another avenue to go um, if things don't work out on that other end. Um, next up, man. Oh, man, such a uh, talented young gun here. Isaiah Parker uh, taking on Nick Merritt. And it was Isaiah Parker um, just jumping on him from the bell, from the get go. <laughs> Um, snagging up a rear naked choke at 25 seconds of the first round. Not a lot to talk about other than yeah. just being impressed uh, with the young uh, Isaiah Parker and how, you know, it's, it's just, it, it was like blood in the water. And as soon as he saw his opportunity, it was like a mousetrap, the way he just snapped and yanked that rear naked choke. Um, such an impressive win. Um, if you If you were there and didn't, didn't know you did afterwards that his aunt was in the building. Uh, she ah. thought, That's my nephew. Ah. That's my nephew. <laughs> yes. Uh, but she's got every reason to be excited in, in college because uh, that nephew of hers was pretty damn impressive. I, uh, I'm still kind of just sick to my stomach uh, that he, uh, you know, we missed out on that uh, Amaj Mai and Isaiah Parker fight that we had in our real good, a yeah. while back because I think that would have been absolutely amazing. But I, you know, Isaiah's staying busy and he's building that record, Tim. And so three and zero. Yeah. So now at three and zero, uh, you know, fighting those debuts, you know, just doesn't seem as exciting now as a, mm. as getting him a fight against someone else that's three and zero, four and one, something like that. So. I cannot wait to see him back in the cage. Um, what, what did you take away from 25 seconds? Yeah, I mean, not much in 25 seconds. I mean, for one, Nick Merritt, the guy that he was fighting, didn't have a lot of information on him. It was first time he competed, first time out of his gym, Machine MMA in McMinnville. Uh, but he had just uh, gotten his blue belt. It's hard to almost believe that Isaiah is a blue belt. I uh, He's a blue belt. I, I, I've said he's a purple belt before and honestly believed it, but he, <laughs> he is a blue yeah. belt. Very talented one. And... Uh, you know, uh, Merritt at the very least looked very put together. I mean, he, he was a strong, uh, stronger guy. He had, had five or six years of age on uh, young Parker and uh, just, yeah, just swarmed him in. Um, I'd like to get Merritt back just to see what he can do in a more prolonged outing. He was great to work with. Uh, Parker, man, yeah, the time to step up the competition for Parker, I believe. Um, there's lots of fun fights out there for him. And he is a 45er, really. He did this fight at 55, but he is a 45er. Um, and, you know, there's a few fights uh, that I'd like to see maybe down the road. Maybe a Blake Grant and him uh, could be a lot of fun. Uh, maybe one more fight for Blake in the in-between. And then uh, that might be something fun to put together, especially if Briven were to go pro, which opens up that 45 title. Obviously, Parker teammates with Briven. Yeah. Ooh, you know what? Yeah, that is nice because, you know, I think, uh, you know, Blake has talked to Briven. I think there's some friendliness there mm -hmm. and realizing that Briven's got a big record. So Blake didn't feel like he was ready for it. He wasn't asking for something that he, you know, he wasn't going to call out something that he didn't think he had earned yet that opportunity. But if Briven were to vacate, uh, I would think Blake, especially if, if he competes here in the next month, like we're hoping that he does. Um, I think if Briven, yeah, I think you're right. If Briven vacates, I think he would be more than happy to fight uh, competition to get him that opportunity. Mm -hmm. So moving along, the last fight of our um, undercard, uh, another one that just, uh, man, had heat on it, had some uh, had some nastiness in the build up, a little uh, little rivalry going here. Uh, between uh, Dustin Berry and Anson Phillips. Anson Phillips representing Rowan, Dustin Berry, Cook's Impact. Um, and there's so much to digest on this one. I'll try to make it quick here, Tim. So Yeah, it's hard. Dustin, there's a few Dustin different Berry levels. Was, yeah, Dustin Berry was our amateur lightweight champion. Anson Phillips was our amateur welterweight champion. Uh, these guys knew they wanted to fight each other. It was where, when, and how. At the end of the day, the smoke cleared. It was Anson vacating. Uh, his title to challenge Barry for his. Uh, so this was a 155 pound amateur championship fight between Barry and Phillips on the scales though. Uh, Dustin Barry had to forfeit his title, uh, came in overweight, was not able even with the extended time frame, to get the weight off necessary to make it a title fight. Uh, damn near not even to necessarily make it a fight, uh, at all. It was that kind of hit or miss. Um, uh, but the Phillips uh, crew, uh, him and his coaches, had decided that with a two-point de deduction, 
and Dustin Berry obviously not even being eligible to win his title back that night that they would accept those terms. So now it's a vacant title fight just for one man. Mm-hmm. But it didn't matter to us cage side because the 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 tension was still there. The the nastiness. The these two still needed to fight. Yes, they needed to hash this thing out, man, and, and just yeah. get get it out of their system. Uh, during ring in- introductions, I'm watching. I'm watching Anson tell him you're a little boy, you know, telling him he's a little man over there. Uh, Dustin telling him that he's fixing to put him to sleep. I mean, it, it just kept going through the announcements. And uh, man, Tim, unfortunately, unfortunately, at a minute and 43 seconds of this round, number one, uh, Anson just took a funky step with weight on his ankle. I'm hoping it's just a high ankle sprain, but uh, kind of, you know, talked afterwards and I have seen on social media, uh, you know, letting out that he had been dealing with this ankle injury kind of over the last few weeks, uh, if not maybe even this whole camp. He's just tried to push through, tried to, you know, use some of the neoprene sleeves, just trying to get some sort of uh, stability there on the ankle. And um, I'm sure it was a combination of the injury already and then just a funky step on it. Um, You know, he went down uh, writhing in pain. Thank God it's not as bad as what it it seemed like it was going to be at first. You know, I really thought we were about to walk over there and see a, you know, foot turn sideways. Um, But thank God we didn't. And, and, you know, good health to Anson Phillip. Ovi Ovi takes the time off to to let it properly heal, but then comes back. Um, And who knows what Anson's plans are going to be when he comes back. He may, his trajectory may be completely different and say, uh, you know what? It's time for me to go pro. You know, uh, it's time for me to do this, or uh, you know, I'm going to do 170 again. I don't know. He's got a lot of different options there to think about. Dustin Berry, kind of the same. You know, uh, he, he was obviously happy to walk out of there, uh, technically with a with a win and a TKO win. At that, he improved his record of five and zero now, and so at five and zero, uh, where does he go? Tim, is it time now? Does he want one more amateur because that one wasn't fulfilling? Or I would think I so. Go ahead and go pro. I think, man, I think honestly, uh, I think that had he came out of this win making the way and getting a good decisive win, then it, I think that pro would have been the next logical step. That isn't how it went down. I think that with Dustin Berry um, – now, first off, it's not like he has a history of doing this kind of thing. It's the first time that he has missed weight. Uh, I think there were some underlying circumstances that made this camp difficult for him as and Bailey Flaherty's camp difficult for her as well. Not making excuses for anyone, uh, just saying that there were, were some circumstances. Uh, that said, uh, I think that uh, he needs to get he needs to get a, one more good, tough, hard amateur fight in, make the weight properly and then go pro on a legitimately high note. Not saying this is an illegitimate high note, but like you, you can only feel so good about winning when you've missed the way and then the way that it ended. That fight was just starting to pick up. I mean, it was uh, when they when I saw the time, I was like, no way. It seemed like they've been fighting, you know, nearly the whole round, surely. And uh, because it was, you know, the grind was beginning. Both guys uh, had started landing. Uh, we saw Anson really in, investing into body work with knees and uppercuts to the body that uh, was smart. I mean, if Barry didn't come in shape and he missed the weight, then that's money in the bank for the second and third rounds, fourth, fifth rounds, you know. So he had a really good game plan going there. Uh, Barry, uh, he landed some hard strikes as well, man. And uh, and both guys were, were working and getting takedowns, reversals. I mean, it seemed like a lot happened in a minute and 43 seconds. So uh, I don't know. I don't, you know, we, a lot of people aren't real big on rematches. This is one that like, if it were pro debuts or something, maybe we could, uh, maybe we could justify a rematch in a fight that, Still didn't really feel like anything was settled. Yeah, and they were friendly afterwards, and that's always good to oh, see. Oh, okay. well, that may that may be yeah. just all water under the bridge. But the thing is, too, though, I I think the rematch is out of the question just because Anson's obviously going to have to take time off, and Barry has let it be known. He doesn't seem to be the type of guy who wants to take any time off. So right. uh, getting him in his debuts may be hard, but I'm not saying we won't see them again. Uh, mm-hmm. Just probably not his debuts because Dustin's going to want to do something quick, I'm sure. Uh, mm-hmm. he's, he's, he's wanted to stay active. Um, and he seemed like talking to him afterwards that, uh, 
you know, he's not one to take too much time off. Yeah. Um, but all right, man. So uh, pro card, the uh, main card, if you will. Uh, Lost we had, fight. Huh? Lost a fight. Yeah, I was about to say, we had four. <laughs> we had four scheduled. Ended up with three. You know, that really hasn't happened to us in a while, Tim, on, on the pro side. On no. The, on the pro side of the card where. Like our first show. Yeah, to where you lose something uh, on fight week, um, but it uh, it happened. Kind of took us back, you know. Almost, almost when you sent me that text or call, I was like, "No, nah, no, nah. nah. <laughs> that doesn't happen." You lied. You lied. <laughs> not on this day, and because we haven't had to deal with it in so long. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, but you know what? Oh well, uh, the three we had were fun. They were entertaining. Uh, they were really good fights, and I enjoyed every one of them. So. Um, you know, we'll just move on from the drop. Uh, but our first pro fight of the night was Carter Beekman taking on Tyler Langford. We had a split decision, and I, you know, not surprised one bit. I don't want to say rightfully so, but it was that close a fight to where a split decision really does tell the story about how I'm close shocked this, a bit. No. about how close this fight was. You know, talked to both fighters afterwards. Um, it was Beekman taking the split decision, uh, 29-28. 28-29, 29-28. Um, so, again, you saw, one judge just saw one round different than the other two. That's how close it was. T- talked to both gentlemen afterwards, and, you know, they, they both, you know, what did you think? Did you think it was the right decision, this and that? And, you know, it's one of those where you tell them, Tim, uh, uh, no one got robbed. And no. had that announcer called any one of the names, I was going to be okay with it. Mm-hmm. Um because they asked just they they kind of put you on the spot and say, Do you think I won? And it's yeah. like, Well, yeah, I think you won. But if they had called the other guy, I could argue that he would have won, you know, because it was mm-hmm. that tit for tat and back and forth. It's what are you looking for again? You yeah. know, what do you weigh the I what do you weigh the most heavily? I think yeah. it goes with uh I think it's safe to say that Beatman banked the first round and, and mm-hmm. Langford banked the third round. The second round was the round that would have been in question. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and, and watching the fight, Tim, you just kind of watch their different styles. Uh, Carter's pitching in the major leagues when he's in there. I mean, he winds up that right hand and he's throwing it down the pipe, throwing the heaters. Mm-hmm. Uh, Langford, you know, I don't want to disrespect him by saying he doesn't have any power, but his was more just kind of touching them up and, and volume kind of thing. It didn't mm-hmm. seem like a lot of power. There wasn't enough to where Beekman was shying back, you know, at mm-hmm. anything that he that he threw. But in that second round, though, is where I, I I can't remember the times. I We usually don't record this quick, so I haven't had a chance to even go back. But there was just, I think maybe at the end of the first round, though, where Carter really worked hard maybe against the Cajun for a takedown um, and, and did some grappling. And I felt like that is when the second round came up, that exertion that he had from that attempt to takedown maybe is where he kind of had an adrenaline dump. And, and you know, kind of gassed at that point and, and wasted a lot of energy. So second round to me is when Langford really started just putting some things together. And then for the first time you do see uh, Beekman backing up some, backing up, being pushed across the cage, you know, with what uh, Langford was throwing. And in the first round you didn't see that Carter's forward, forward, forward. And that's where things started really kind of, you know, evening out. I, such a close fight. Like I said, going into the third round, it was like, I have no clue. People, what do you think? I have no clue. I have no clue. All I can tell you was, I feel Carter won the first round. Mm-hmm. All I can tell you, I don't know how these judges are seeing round number two. And then as we're watching three unfold, you're like, this is going to get real interesting because mm-hmm. now I'm pretty damn sure Tyler Langford has won round three mm-hmm. uh, without question. Uh, so um, it, was a, it was a lot of people holding their breath, but it was uh, Carter Beekman getting his hand raised and Coming off a loss, I know Carter felt good about getting the win and uh, getting back on the right side of the record. So we will see what's next for Carter Beekman, but also Tyler Langford. He may have lost, and his record may not show it at this point. But I told him. He's solid. I said, there are so many good fights out there in this weight class for you that that Tim can put together. I said, I promise you, there, there are some good fights for you out there. Um, you know, depending on when he gets back in, a similar opponent. I was thinking Langford and Alex Riggs on uh, a trip to Knoxville. It'd be a really good fight. I think it would be a really good fight uh, for for a hometown fight for Riggs because he's mm-hmm. got a great tra- uh, fan sport. But I think their skill sets, similar records and yeah, skill similar sets. records and their skill sets would mm-hmm. would really mesh well in the cage together. I agree. I like that a lot. Actually, uh, Langford's a guy that is it's uh, 
he doesn't seem like he's exerting a whole lot of energy at any one time. And it's probably by design because, you know, his gas tank stayed very steady throughout the fight. And, you know, no, he's not just hitting you with like one hit or quitter shots. It's an accumulation. He's landing, throwing volume. uh, And as such, he can kind of keep at least that same steady application all the way through. Uh, Whereas, like you said, Beekman uh, really throwing, uh, you know, throwing hammers early. Um, and and still throwing hard late. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I don't think that anybody wants to get by Carter uh, clean even late. But at the same time, uh, when he was going for that takedown at the end of the first round, I told you, I said, that, I don't think it's necessary. It's unnecessary because I, I, I think he had clocked the round most likely. He didn't need to put a stamp on it. If it had been like a really close nip and tuck affair and, oh, man, this is close. And we get this takedown at the end and we'll really put our stamp on it. A C4 style kind of thing, you know. Um I think he had that round already and he didn't need to do that. And by doing that, you're, I think it really zapped his gas tank going into the second. Um, another thing I, I told Carter this afterwards, like you got to stop looking. So you got to stop looking so tired because uh, sometimes even when you're still uh, defending yourself and hanging in there and, and still doing okay, when you look so labored judges sometimes uh, will let that uh, play a factor into their decision. Um, I think the second round comes down to uh, the age old question of what you like the most there. If you recall, there was a lengthy span of time in the second round where Carter had his back and, and was working a rear naked choke, which he um, probably, I had to go back and watch it, but over a minute uh, uh, on his back, he wasn't able to get that rear naked choke. Uh, so like, do you give credit to that dominant position and a submission attempt uh, that did not land? Or do you give credit to uh, what happened towards the end where you saw uh, Langford starting to get off and uh, Beatman starting to look more labored. Uh, and oftentimes towards the ends of those rounds, that can be that can hold more salt because it's the last thing they saw. So no issue here, man. I would not have had a, a problem either way. Uh, that one went. Both guys fought really well. i uh, like to work with both of them again for sure. Yeah. My favorite part of the fight. I mean, the fight was great, but just a personal thing. <laughs> we were close to the red corner with about a minute left in the fight, you know, in the third round when uh, his coach and, and Matt Harris were you know, pretty much yelling at him, like, dude, there's – you know, like, the coaches will be, want him to be more technical during the fight, but with a minute left and knowing how close the fight is, oh. Matt just started yelling, throw bombs. And yeah. he listened, and he just started throwing <laughs> haymakers and landing some of them too. Yeah. Uh, but he listened to his coach, and he was just like that, all right, I know I'm completely exhausted, mm-hmm. but uh, I know this one's so close. And he just started throwing these bombs bomb right hands like i said almost like a, a major league pitcher winding up yeah and a couple <laughs> of them connected and it was uh it was just it was fun to watch that carter said he's won to 45 yes he did he made that yeah. announcement that he wanted to go to 45 and he didn't yep. seem to be dying at weigh-ins he seemed pretty i mean like everybody else he just wants to get it over with and get on the scale and get off but it he, physically he did not look bad at all on this weight cut it'd be interesting uh definitely uh Definitely some some new matchups to look at there. Oh, yeah, it just opens up so many doors. Um, mm-hmm. All right, man, throw back to yesteryear, if you will. Our next fight, your co-main event of the evening. Saw a couple of uh, old school uh, guys step yeah. in the cage. Records, put them aside. Doesn't matter what they are. Um, this was kind of just our uh, our old school fight. Uh, Anthony Morgan, if you've been around that that East Tennessee region. Uh, during the last what, Tim, two decades maybe, <laughs> or decade and a half. Decade and a half, yeah. Anthony's decade been around, man. You see, he is he's seen like a few different generations of the guard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He he's been through a couple of waves mm-hmm. of like I said, the fight generation mm-hmm. coming through. Uh who all has he fought? You've seen him in with Land Weird. He fought Townsend too, didn't he? Like, uh, JSP, uh, JSP, uh yeah, you know, he's guys. fought uh Kama Worthy. You know, uh, has a win over Dustin Pegg, you know, so yeah. you know, there's uh, he's fought a lot. He's of really seen good it guys. all. He's, he's a, a true vet of the and game. He came to Chattanooga to take on another man who's done a lot in, in the time that he's been in here and has seen a lot, traveled around, even yeah. put his foot on, on some bigger stages under some brighter lights. Logan, real deal, Neil, Chattanooga's own, uh, stepped in the cage with Anthony Morgan last uh, last night. I keep forgetting, like, we are ordered yeah. for we're recording the day after like last true. night. This was just last night. Uh, ended up taking a, a first round uh, TKO uh, away from Anthony Morgan in four minutes and 13 seconds. Um, you know, as far as everything up to the 413, 
Uh, they both looked like pros. Yeah. You know, that, that, the just technique, you know yeah. what I mean? It, there was, it was it's each measured. other out. Yeah. I know we all kept waiting for Morgan to blitz him. Uh, mm-hmm. And, it, you know, but they were both kind of were just real measured. Like you said, fought as professionals, mm-hmm. you know, kind of a measured feeling out tit for tat. Let's see where we're at. There was a couple of times Logan found his butt on the canvas. Um, I think it was a combination of, of rushing in Morgan's punch and just kind of, you know, jarring him back, but, you know, got knocked down a couple of times. Um, but Logan was able to pull off a, I feel it was a straight, right. Uh, uh-huh. down, the, down the pipe and sent Anthony Morgan back on his butt, maybe even rolled kind of back on his back. And, uh, your referee jumped in, jumped in and, and waved it off. I think Logan may have, been able to slide in quick and get maybe another one off mm-hmm. while he was yeah. on the ground, but I'd have to go back and really dissect when the ref initiated the stoppage. But I feel like he was moving in before that first ground yeah. and pound. Yeah, he was horizontal at all. Yeah, he was already <laughs> calling it based on the dropping of of Anthony Morgan. Um, I know you're going to have a little bit to say about it. I do too. I think I'll just go ahead and start, and we'll see if you agree, man. Yeah. At the end of the day. People First, you can't take nothing from Logan. No, absolutely not. It, it has nothing to do with Logan at all. Logan had a job to do, and it's to win a fight, go in. I, I, he has no control over how the fight was called from an official, mm-hmm. whether that be a judge or a referee. That's yeah. it's, that's the one thing that's out of your control. But, um, uh, you know, it, this is one of those where it didn't matter real time. It didn't matter replay. Uh because sometimes people go, well, in real time it looked this, but when I saw the replay, or but it didn't matter how I looked at it, we I immediately felt that this was an early stoppage, you know. Um, and again, it has nothing to do with Logan. In fact, you can play the hindsight game, two or three more ground and pounds on him, you know, and maybe we're just saying all he did was stop the inevitable. Uh, but for Anthony Morgan, they want the inevitable. Let's let's let it happen. Let's have it play out. So Anthony Morgan. Definitely upset over the stoppage. Um, you know, I, I don't think there's many that would disagree that it was just a tad early. Um, I guess that's, that's really the only argument I could see people having is how early. Not that it wasn't early, but just how early was it? Was it grotesquely early? Was it, you know, I'd, to me, that would be the only kind of argument. But, um, you know what, Logan Logan did his thing, man. He, he, uh, he had a man standing across from him that was, you know, just well versed, uh, been around the block, has seen it all. Um, Logan looked good, you know, coming off the layoff too, as well. And um, you know, he did he did his job. He mm-hmm. I, like I threw the punch. I can't help what happened after that. And and I dropped him and the ref made a call. It is what it is. And believe me, had the ref not made that call, uh, Logan was going to keep fighting, you know, regardless of, of how many times he was knocked down before it. Um, and, and he was going to follow up that knockdown. And it's just, unfortunately now for all of us to guess what would have happened after that would Anthony had, you know, weathered through it, got a hold of a leg and maybe slowed things down and got his wits or would Logan have gotten three or four good hammer fists off and, and bounced his head on the back of the canvas. And it was, you know, it was going to happen anyway. We'll never know. But what we do know is Logan Mm -hmm. has uh, improved his record and, and he, um, uh, what is what is it now? He He's now, now four and five. Four and five. So he is he is knocking on the door of that five hundred record. Yeah, yeah. Congrats to Logan. As a Logan Neal fan, then uh, you know I got to say very happy for him. He needed this win. This was a maybe a must win. I I I think a I think dropping to three and six would have been very hard to overcome. Uh, so he needed this one. I'm happy that he got it. Happy for him that he got it. As an Anthony Morgan, I'm a fan of both these guys. I like them both a whole lot. Uh, as an Anthony Morgan fan, you know, would have liked to have seen him get um, at least take an- get to take another three or four more um, to just kind of clarify. Um, you know, I was standing or we were sitting directly across from this. So when he dropped him, I did – Anthony's eyes were glassy. I, I mean, you know, he – I do believe that there that he was uh, certainly um, I don't want to say he was knocked out, but he was he was certainly affected by the punch greatly. Uh, but um, 
the referee had made the decision, at that, in my opinion, to stop the fight like as soon as he hit the ground. And so as the referee's coming in to stop it, there is one more. But as soon as the referee, I mean, as soon as the referee is in there, then Anthony appears to be fairly lucid looking at the referee and I like saying, what the fuck, you know, like, let me fight. Uh, you know, these are pros at the end of the day. Had it been an amateur, then I wouldn't have really had any problem at all with it. And I'll, we always want to, you know, if we're going to err, we want to err on the side of caution. Obviously, we don't want to get these guys hurt out there. But uh, I think my main thing here, and I said it last night, is these guys need to to be aware of who they're in there with. Really kind of take that into account. Uh, Anthony Morgan's a 14-fight pro vet that has been in there with a lot of bad motherfuckers and has taken punishment from those guys over the course of rounds, come back to win fights. Um, yeah, I think you got to let him take his beating if he's going to take his beating uh, because, you know, we're, we're affecting these guys' purses and, you know, their win bonuses, things like that um, uh, beyond their record. Um, and you, one could argue that up until that point, it was four minutes and some odd second, four seventeen or something like that. Um, so, you know, one could argue up until that point, Anthony had been winning the round. Um, I think that he dropped Logan at least two times, maybe three, just again, just flash little, nothing crazy, you know, just like flash shots. Yeah. But I think that, um, you know, that would have the, the fight was, we were just getting going again, you know, uh, like, the, oh, like hey, the fight. we were just getting going. It, it, that could have been a really good fight. I'm watching it now all right, yeah. on my phone, a little highlight here. And I don't know. I don't know, man. I, I, I will tell you, go to Logan Neal's Facebook page. He's got a, yeah. uh, he's got a reel up. And when Anthony drops, he rolls over to his side. You know what I mean? Yeah. Almost like he yeah. is in the kind of covering up. You know what mm. I'm saying? Like, I don't know. He, when the punch connects and he's like on his way down, I think there is like a bit of glass. You can see some glassiness yeah, to the I'm eye saying. or whatever, you know. But uh, so I did see that. But he's I not think on his butt, like ready to pop back up. Like he he rolls over just knowing, like, I don't know. It, it I'm not saying I don't still feel that it was an early stoppage, but I can I can see why maybe the ref, the way he rolled over to his side slowly kind of just gives that that shocked, you know, uh, mm-hmm. hurt, you know, uh, air about it. Yeah. You know, In an amateur fight, I'm good. In yeah. an amateur fight, I'm good. I still – Pro yeah, fight, I'm, man, you, yeah, I gave you two or three more of them bad boys. I don't yeah, think yeah, Anthony yeah. have a problem taking two or three more punches you know, in the face. I agree but, with you, you know, I still. Go ahead and let's get, get a few more in and put a stamp on it. But mm-hmm. watching it, I can see, you know, why maybe – you know, the referee, just just because of the body language mm-hmm. when Morgan hit the ground. Um, so, like I said, regardless, though, man, there's a winner, there's a loser. And um, uh, at the end of the day, it. yeah, at the end of the day, <laughs> congratulations to Logan Neal, because like you said. Uh, he needed that win. Yeah, he, he needed it. And, you know, if you've been along for the Logan Neal journey, um, you know, you we want to see the best for everyone. But you do over the years, you know, uh, get close to some of these guys and you just you're just around them so much you don't want to see anthony morgan lose but you're definitely happy for the for the guy that won because he needed it you know mm-hmm. and so um you know, i just wanted the badass fight yeah no absolutely <laughs> and it was and it was there for four yeah, it was going it was coming yeah. it was definitely there so we'll move on and and we will hit up the uh, main event of the evening females were uh top of the card last night in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and I think rightfully so. At the, at the end of the day, someone may have wanted to argue why, why, why. Well, you saw why, because this was a really, really good fight uh, between two tough ladies, two very nice, very sweet, awesome to work with ladies. But when it came, came time to get in the cage and try to hurt each other and win a fight, these girls were nasty, uh, dirty in a good way as far as, you know, uh, the dirty boxing type way, you know. But uh, it was Cheyenne Hall defeating uh, the Mayor Bear, Mary Rosenbach, unanimous decision. Uh, that may be the only thing that I kind of, you know, take away from this card is I wasn't expecting 30-27 across the board because I felt like Mary in the second round mm-hmm. had uh, even things out. Uh, and maybe, it, I, you know, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't watched it back. Maybe it was just me just wanting to put so much on that third and final round that I gave Mary the second one because yeah. I had the dramatization of it. 
you know, uh, was was thicker. But that, that, um, that yeah, of course. That, oh, can we have a little bit of uh, heat in the third yes, round? Yes, yes. Way, yeah. But uh, but uh, for as dominant as, as Cheyenne Hall felt in the first round, for Mary to even come back in the second round and make it in my head, you know, as close as I really felt it was, and I, I'm not thinking I made it up. I think it was a close second round, and I think Mary, you know, did enough to win that round. She had she had a little. Uh, flip of the switch herself in the second round. Yeah. And uh, I remember making the comment to you, Tim, I was like, is this mad Mary? I've never seen mad. Like, but she got uh, aggressive, you know? Yeah. And, um, and I really felt like we were even going into the third round. Um, Mary had been tripped up a kind of a couple of uh, judo throws. Uh, you, you noticed in the second round, she was able to kind of avoid those. And, but when she did get down, she, she fought her ass off to get back up and not stay down. Well, Cheyenne Hall, usually when she gets girls down, they stay down and they take a beating for the rest of the round. Heavy. She got was, really good ground upon. Yes. And, and Mary was able to get up and make this thing a hell of a fight. So uh, I had it 29-28 on my scorecards, but it is what it is because the decision is still the same. Cheyenne Hall uh, over Mary Rosenbeck uh, in our main event. And again, Cheyenne Hall had nothing but just nice and beautiful things to say about Mary Rosenbeck after the fight. And they were like, you know, is there a lot of power there that we had to worry about? No. She was like, but just that they said the same thing that you and I say forever. She's like, they said, but that Terminator mentality, it doesn't matter how many times you hit her. She just keeps coming forward and she, and, and she has volume. She keeps yeah. putting it in, in your face mm-hmm. over and over and over again. And they were like, and that becomes hard to deal with. And, you know, it's like with her and her coach was like, we had to kind of overcome that because she wasn't going to stop fighting me. She wasn't going to stop coming forward. And she fights her way in with just, you know, volume. And so they were really impressed by Mary as well. Um, but Cheyenne Hall was great to work with. Mary Rosemick, always great to work with. Uh, they deserve this spot and and all the flowers that they got afterwards. Oh, for sure. A uh, fan of both these ladies. Mary, always a sweetheart to work with. Uh, good crowd there for her as always. And, uh, you know, uh, just more experience for her. She's uh, She hasn't taken a loss in a moment. So uh, it's certainly not a, a situation where she got hurt or any damage there. She just could not. Um, she kept getting up, obviously. So that's a good thing. It's just uh, every round, uh, you know, the, the, she found herself on her back. But um, I will say, very impressed with her uh, ability to continue to get up. And a couple of the, after uh, those first couple throws, she, she started to figure them out and, uh, you know, reversed a couple herself. So uh, definitely still seeing growth from Mary Rosenbeck. Cheyenne Hall, now three and one. Uh, got a great look, obviously, and uh, in a division where at three and one in the featherweight division, uh, maybe one off from, I would think, maybe get an opportunity somewhere. And uh, and she'll be a handful wherever that is. Uh, great lo- working with uh, her and Chris Dempsey from uh, uh, Matt Factory. Uh, uh, just uh, a professional all around. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, Cheyenne Hall, her upper body strength. Uh, at weigh-ins when she took her shirt off and you, uh, the shoulder definition, just you can just see all that strength in her upper body. Then it's like, okay, now I see why she controls fights on the ground. Mm-hmm. Very strong girl, um, broad, wide shoulders that you can tell her back. Um, definitely, just, there's some strength there. <laughs> there's, yeah, there's some strength there. But uh, man, it was a great night. Uh, loved it. Loved the main event. Uh, love the effort and the fight in every guy that, that stepped in the cage and put on the show. Crowd was really invested, mm-hmm. uh, I feel, and were into it. Um, ended up just being a really, really nice night. And, you know, the intangibles that nobody else sees. I mean, we had a we had a two-hour build and a hour-and-a-half teardown. And we were out. I mean, those are the things. Those are we, our wins. Yeah. yeah, those are our wins that make, uh, you know, the evening great when it's like, Holy shit, y'all! It's 1130. thirty. We've locked up the trailer. We're out of here. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was so, awesome. That was nice, man. But uh, you know, we're recording today because it's time to put this thing to bed and uh, move forward. We'll let some ink dry and and uh, payments process uh, behind the scenes. But you know, tomorrow morning when we wake up, it is full steam ahead. Um, headed back to Nashville. We are going back underground. It's usually a, a bi-yearly event it seems now about twice a year is our nashville uh rotation and it seems to happen summer and christmas summer and christmas yeah. or, like july and december uh, december more than anything seems to be our our underground month man but uh is holy, this the card of the year yeah is this the card of the year is this the card of the Top year two i think for sure Ooh. um 
I would definitely say top two. If some of these things really stick and last, I mean, some of these fights we've had, we, there's a lot of buzz. Top to bottom, man. It's Yeah, crazy. there's a lot of buzz. I think from top to bottom it could be. There are some fights that would make it arguable on some other cards, but if you look from bottom to top, this could definitely be it. Um, you've seen a lot of the announcements, guys, if you're out there. I mean, Andrew Stewart, Nate Gaston out of California, uh, pro debut. We've got the return of Pat Crumpton, Zach Hicks. We've got the Raw Dog. Uh, never been on an Aries show, but man, if you've heard about him from Clarksville, Tennessee, uh, he is the next coming of Nate Landwehr when it comes to the <laughs> mic. You know, it's still to be seen in the cage, but on the mic he is. Um, and and taking on a debut, Dustin Garrett. Uh, man, one of the most exciting fights. Uh, our Aries uh, amateur flyweight champion Bryce Warner um, asking and receiving, I guess, the, currently the NFC flyweight champion yeah. Ben Rainwater. Uh, so uh, what a hell of an amateur fight that is. Oh, my God. And then we've just got a lot of just highly anticipated uh, debuts across mm -hmm. the, the bottom of the car, too. So, yeah, we'll be announcing that. Uh, uh, there's a main event coming. Yeah, there's a main event still to come. <laughs> In fact, we'll probably get that ready to drop tomorrow, I think. It, it, it looks like uh, we, I, we've been busy with Aries 22. I've got to get one more contract back signed, but one of them signed, and the other one's definitely verbally agreed upon. We just got to get the get the paper in our hand. We still got a main event to, uh, to announce, man. So uh, all hands on deck, uh, full force, full steam ahead to December 15th. If you haven't got a ticket yet, you better get on because Andrew Stewart's pretty much sold them all. Um, there's only about four tables left. Uh, with a month to go, <laughs> pretty much. A uh, couple hundred GAs left. Uh, don't hesitate. You will be asking, can I get in about a week before the fight? And the answer is going to be no, I'm pretty sure. So, uh, Tim, man, we'll take a little bit of a break. Uh, and by a little bit of a break, I mean maybe Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> maybe Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, and then we're back at it. Yeah, I'm excited for it, man. This is this card has got me amped up for uh, December. I got to say, this is uh, we're going to close the year on a strong note, both uh, Aries 22 and the Underground. And uh, as we roll out of here, do us a favor, guys, give us a like and give us a uh, subscribe. Hit the notification bell; you'll get notified when we post all of our content here at the Zero Hour. We'll have the uh, fights from Aries 22 last night going up here uh, in 30 days. So uh, if you subscribe, uh, you'll know when those go up. Um, also, uh, before we go, shout out to our sponsor, Smoky Mountain CBD. Check them out, SmokyMountainCBD.com. They got some uh, real dang stuff for you over there. And, uh, Jeff, I guess that'll do it, man. We'll uh, we'll wrap this bad boy up. Uh, stay tuned. I'm sure Kyle will have plenty of content um, in the uh, coming weeks, uh, interviews and previews for yeah. the underground. Him and Matt, a Matt Ash over there ripping them out. Yeah, lots they are. Yeah, years. so stay tuned for lots of content still to come. And uh, I guess as far as uh, Jeff and I go, we'll see you all here in about uh, four weeks. Yes, sir. We'll see you all yeah. next time.